Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to prepare for the upcoming organic chemistry semester. Organic chemistry is notorious for having a very high failure, withdrawal, and retake rate. Now, keeping in mind that every student and every scenario is different, there are still things you can do before the semester begins to give yourself not only a fighting chance, but to put you ahead of the class and ahead of the curve. When it comes to preparing for the upcoming semester, there are three main categories. There are students who are taking Organic Chemistry 1 for the first time, students taking Orgo 2 for the first time, and students who are retaking the course because of failure, withdrawal, or because you need a higher score. The way that you approach it is going to be very similar with a few slight differences. So let's go through them one at a time and make sure no matter what, you know exactly what you have to do. When I first took organic chemistry, the time when I withdrew because I didn't want that F, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And by the time I figured it out, it was too late. The first few weeks, I knew it was a difficult course, but it didn't feel difficult. It was general chemistry review, easy stuff. And by the time it got difficult, or rather by the time it hit me that the material was difficult, it was too late. I had already bombed the first exam, we were approaching the second exam, and I was hopelessly behind. The biggest thing you can do going into Orga 1 is making sure that you understand exactly what to expect. I don't just mean hearing from other students what the course is like, I mean being familiar with the material and understanding what these topics are all about and what specifically makes it so difficult. The first few topics you will have seen before, probably in general chemistry. But after that, you want to start getting familiar with things like resonance and mechanisms. What you do will depend on how much time you have left, but try to at least get through three chapters. The initial topics will look very familiar to you because these are things you've seen in general chemistry. But then once you get past that, you'll get to things like resonance, acids and bases from a mechanistic approach, and just mechanisms in general. These are very, very important. But don't just go into it thinking, this is what I have to do, let me see how much I can get done. Be deliberate about it, set a goal, make a calendar, make a plan, and then work to execute it every step of the way. You don't have to stick to it exactly, but you'll have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish. The first thing you need is a syllabus. Some professors will give it to you early and some professors will email it to you if you ask them. You can also try searching online for an old syllabus by the same professor or asking a student who's taken the class before. If none of those options work, that's no excuse. Just use my syllabus companion link below and go through that in order. The early topics are pretty similar. It's only when you get to mechanisms that the order tends to change between the schools then figure out what you want to accomplish. You can do this in two ways. You can decide on how many chapters you want to cover or how many hours you want to devote. If you're just starting out, I would focus on hours as the goal and chapters as a recommendation because when you don't know what to expect, you don't know how many chapters you can cover in any given time. So for example, if you have three weeks, you can decide one chapter a week or you can do two hours a day for three days a week, every week leading up to your class. During that time, go in order. Start with chapter one, go through the book, go through videos, make sure you understand, move on to chapter two. Don't worry so much about doing extra practice at this point, rather focus on understanding the material. And then anytime a question comes up within the chapter or within the video, try it on your own and then look for the logic behind the answer. Not just the answer, but why is that the answer and how does that work? That is the key to doing well, making sure you actually get what's going on. Another option is to use the Orga One Review Preview Playlist that I have linked below. This has the basic organic chemistry topics from beginner to more advanced. So each video builds on the next. And if you set a goal of say one video a day, you're still gonna get through a decent amount by day one. Most schools break undergrad organic chemistry into two. So you have Orga 1 and 2. 
Some schools break it into three, especially if you're on the quarter system. Organic chemistry is a subject where one chapter builds on the next, which builds on the next. So you can look at organic chemistry two as Orga one on steroids. In organic chemistry one, you learned acids and bases. In Orgo two, you're gonna learn acids and bases again, but instead of a simple alkyne, now you're looking at benzene. Now you're looking at enolate ion formation. Same concept, more complex. In organic chemistry one, you looked at a lot of reactions. You looked at mechanisms, you looked at synthesis. Same thing in Orgo two, but they're more advanced. The molecules are bigger, there are more exceptions, and there's definitely more steps in every reaction. So how do you prepare for this? There are two things you have to do. The first is to make sure you actually remember everything from Orgo one so you have a foundation to build on. And the second is previewing as much of the new material as possible. Let's face it, if you're taking Orgo two after a break, say winter break or summer break, What's the chance that you actually remember everything from last semester? Not a lot. And even if you just finished the class and you got an A, chances are you could still benefit from a review. In one of my Orgo 2 exams, I got an A with a 78 because the class average was a 44. That means there was 20% of the material that I was not comfortable with and I still got that A. But that 20% of uncertainty just gets bigger and bigger and more confusing the more you try to build on it. So no matter what happened in the past, take that time to review. Fill in any knowledge gaps, go back and refresh on anything you forgot, and make sure you're crystal clear with all the basics. The second thing you want to do is start previewing the new chapters. Start learning the new material. If you only have a few days and all you can accomplish is review, you're still gonna be ahead of the class because your classmates forgot everything, your professor expects you to remember everything, and you need to be ready for the new material. If you have more time, yes, definitely get ahead with as many chapters as you can. There are two ways that you can break this up, and I have a couple of sample study calendars linked below. You can break it up where, say, one-third is a review and two-thirds preview, and that could be, for example, if you have three weeks, one week Orgo one review, two weeks of new Orgo material. Or you can break up every study day for a part review, part preview. Say you study for two hours a day, maybe the first 30 minutes is to skim through an Orgo one topic, and the remaining 90 minutes would be going through a new chapter or going through new videos. Last but not least, if you're retaking the course, the way you set up your study schedule is going to be very similar to what we discussed already, but you have to add in that emotional component. Because for a lot of students, just the fear of failure is what scares them so much and holds them back that it ends up hurting them even in this new semester. When I first took organic chemistry and withdrew, I was so scared of taking it again that it took me two years. Two years to find the courage, even though in that time I took so many more difficult classes, I was just so scared of taking it again and failing it again. What if I put in all this time and money to pay for this class all over again, only to get another F? I didn't want that to happen. Before you start studying, ask yourself, what happened last time? Why am I in this position that I have to retake the course? In speaking to a lot of students, I hear everything from not understanding the information, not doing enough practice questions, leaving things to the last minute and then cramming, or not practicing the right way. Figure out what it was and then ask yourself, how can I make sure, how can I prepare in advance to do things differently so this doesn't happen again? If you didn't understand the material, very simple. Make sure you understand the material. If your book is not enough, watch a video. If the video is not enough, go to a study group, go to office hours, get a tutor, find someone to explain it to you so that you're not confused this time around. Not enough practice? That's an easy fix. Time consuming, but easy. Just do more practice. Don't wait till the last minute though. Practice consistently. As you're studying, maybe build in extra time with every chapter to do practice problems. Do the in chapter problems, do the end of chapter problems, Anytime a problem comes up in a video, pause the video, try the question, make sure you understand it before you move on. 
and then have an extra resource for practice during the semester so that you don't fall into that same pattern. Waiting till the last minute, well, that's easy. We're talking about this right now, hopefully before the semester begins, so that you're getting a head start and not forced to cram at the last minute. And finally, not practicing the right way, ask yourself what went wrong. Some students said that they did the practice, they did all the questions, but when they got something wrong, they just memorized the answer. They did everything from memorization rather than understanding. It's a simple fix. You make a mistake, you ask yourself, why was this a mistake and how do I fix it? These are just some examples, but you need to figure out what held you back, how you're going to fix it, and then give yourself permission to do better this time around. It's a mental thing, but it really, really makes a difference. And then create a study plan, exactly what we discussed earlier, or use one of the samples linked below. If you're preparing for the upcoming Orgo semester, first thing you need to do is subscribe and then click the bell icon. This will make sure that anytime I post a new video, you'll be the first one to know. And second, let me know in the comments below when your semester begins and what is the biggest thing you're scared of, either because of what you heard from other students or your past experience. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.